in 1929, my father lost his job, like everybody and so many people did, 1929, and he went back to the farm. And the farm was next to the airport. I was three years old, and that's where I grew up. And that was the beginning of my fascination for airplanes. When did you start flying? I started flying in 1947, and it cost me $62.50. That's what it cost to get a license or to learn how to fly? To learn how to fly. Eight hours of dual instruction and five minutes by myself in the air. Captain's Log, Stardate 1958. Sputnik and Explorer have just launched the Space Age, and in Rhinebeck, New York, Cole Palin has just launched his aerodrome. Well, it's sort of just plain evolved. Uh, I thought this might be a home for my old airplanes, but not with the idea of uh, using the old airplanes. The idea was grassroots airport, we fix the airplanes, we rent airplanes, we tie down there, all these little things that make up a grassroots airport. How large is your collection? There's about 50 airplanes that, that look like airplanes. And there's others that are in bushel baskets and they don't look like airplanes, but they're airplanes. How did you get the idea for this aerodrome of yours? Before I even was collecting airplanes, I knew that there was a beautiful collection in England called the Shuttleworth Trust, and that they were flying World War I airplanes. And so when I was able to acquire six World War I airplanes from Roosevelt Field in 1951, I felt that, well, maybe I could really get one flying. What about the romance of flying? Well, if I was 20, I would say the romance of flying is the speed and the noise and the girls and all of this. But now in my... 30. Now that you're 30, <laughs> 30. now that you're 30, what is it? Now it's green grass, blue sky, fine old airplanes to work on, and pleasant people for the most part. Yeah. Are you going to take me for a ride? You hear that thunder? Well, do you fly in bad weather? Uh, no, I'm not the Good, kind neither of... neither do I! <laughs> <laughs> We didn't fly right away. The rain came and the thunder. The heavens opened and a pelting downpour had Cole and his crew scrambling to get the delicate cloth and wood planes under cover. Then, miraculously, the skies cleared, and we took off in a 1929 New Standard British-made biplane. <laughs> 